to see the scariest ride I ever took in my life? can fly without an engine? Hi, I'm Trini. Did you know forces are pushing and pulling us all our lives? Apply some force. Yeah, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> this is really good. That's pretty good. You got it. Easy too. I got it. Force changes motion, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Train, what are you doing? I want to hear the weather report. Oh, come on, turn the music back on. We can't dance to the relative humidity, you know. You are always making jokes. Can't you be serious for once? This is important. Hurricanes coming. In commercials. Hurricane. Ooh. Hurricane. Hurricane. Shh. This is Force Field bringing you the latest bulletin on Hurricane Rufus. Rufus is now located about a thousand miles from here and he's packing a lot of force. Winds are up to 100 miles an hour. It is known at this time whether Rufus will strike this area. Stay tuned for further announcements. Hey, Rufus sounds like a mean dude. But he's miles away from us. Yeah, but he's close to Puerto Rico right now. Oh, that's right, your family. Yeah. Remember that summer I was at my grandmother's house and the hurricane struck? Yeah, I remember that. No, what happened? Well, we had to leave my grandmother's house in the middle of the night and stay in a church until the storm blew over. I mean, I've never been so scared in my life. Hey, you want to know the scariest moment in my life? How about your most embarrassing moment? <laughs> <laughs> It was nothing like a hurricane, but I'll tell you, I thought I was gonna fly right out of my seat when I rode that roller coaster. Oh, man. one of the hairiest rides I've ever been on. Now I know why you didn't want to go on that thing. Yeah, they don't want those bumps in there anymore. They're going to put some other loops like that one in the tidal wave. You mean they're going to put... They're going to put two more of them in, and then they're going to have a tunnel down near the end of it. That's a crazy looking ride, Chris. Yeah, it really is. What's the name of it? You go upside down. How do you stay in there? Well, it's like when you swing a bucket of water around, it doesn't fall out. And if you do it fast enough, it just stays in. It'll stay in the bucket? Yeah. Does your father like roller coasters? He's ridden a couple. Uh -huh. He rode the turn of the century down there. Apparently, he loves to design them. Is he at the office now? Probably is. Well, can we go down and see him design? Yeah. Hey, this is great. What do you use this for? Well, this is a uh, one-tenth scale model of a ride that we're in the process of developing. 
the uh, final ride will be about a 10 times this size. And does this work the same way the ride at that work? When it goes around like that, you don't fall out because of the forces that keep yeah, you in? Basically, the thing that we have to do with an, with an upside down ride, we do concern ourselves with the forces that are applied to the people that ride. But when we get upside down, we have to have enough force in the up direction so that they're held up against the seat and don't either feel like they're gonna fall out or maybe even fall out if the, the seat bar arrangement doesn't work properly. Exactly what is it about this one that's gonna get it to go from all the way up there, all the way down and around the corpse? Well, it's the, the elevation, obviously. All of these things are what we call gravity rides and they depend on gravity to uh, get the energy out. We'll take a look at it and see what happens when we let it go here smoothly and nicely and everybody feels like they're safe and they feel like they're still sitting in their seat uh -huh. and the sensations are really great now we could show what happens here if we if we miss if we don't get it high enough or if we don't go fast enough uh -huh. uh, it's just not going to make it properly through the loop here and that's the kind of thing that we can't let happen in the amusement park <laughs> Like this particular model is a quarter scale model, and we are able off of this kind of a model to really get some engineering measurement. We slow down and speed up, and we go through different kinds of dips where we have heavy G-forces pushing you down in the seat, mm -hmm. and then we go up over the top of a bump, and we force to where you feel light and you're lifted up out of your seat. We call that negative force. Uh, you mentioned G-forces before. What exactly are G-forces? Well, G-forces is a term we use when we're, when we're standing here. It's a force of gravity. talking about forces and motion. Well, I am certainly a force, and I've been setting things in motion all my life. <laughs> so there. Sí, soy yo, Trini. ¿Cómo está? ¿Estás bien? Ay, qué bueno. Rufus llega mañana. Her boyfriend again? Her grandmother. In Puerto Rico? Mm-hmm. She's worried about her family. No, no, yo She must be pretty worried to make a long distance phone call. Yo te okay. You know, Mark, I pay most of the telephone bill around here. Well, you should. You talk the most. Well, you're not exactly the silent type yourself. <laughs> Come on. How is your grandmother anyhow, Trini? Everybody's okay. They're just hoping Rufus doesn't hit too hard. Yeah. Oh, would you... Come on, you guys. Look, if Rufus really is coming, we better put some of this muscle force in motion and get ready for it. Animal force comes from muscle. Bones are rigid. Motion is caused by the skeletal muscles pulling on the bones.
I thought you guys were going to help get ready for the hurricane. No, I was just practicing a few new throws. Oh, that'll do that. <laughs> you know, Mark, the way you throw, you could use some help from Rufus. record distance throw for a baseball is 446 feet, but a frisbee has been thrown more than 500 feet. Now that's longer than a football field. What makes these slow moving discs travel so far? Well, I went to the World Frisbee Championship to find out from the champ himself, John Kirkland. The secret of how a frisbee flies, it's essentially the same thing as when you're driving along in a car and you put your hand out the window. Have you ever noticed that if you tilt your hand up, it lifts your hand real quickly, and if right. you tilt it down, it pushes it down? Uh -huh. It's the same thing with a Frisbee. When you throw it, the front end of it is up, and that pushes more air hitting the bottom than hitting the top, giving it lift. Uh -huh. now, now, what about the rim here? Right? The rim. The rim is important for two things. First, you need something to grip the throw. If you ever tried to throw a, a record like a 45 or something, it's yeah. kind of hard to grip. Right. And secondly, it makes it stable. You have to have weight at the rim. It acts as a gyroscope to keep it stable. That way it doesn't just Right. Pop. I don't know if you've ever thrown like a 33 RPM yeah. record, but they <laughs> turn over in flight and they're very unstable. So the heavy weight at the rim gives it a gyroscopic effect, making it stable. Mm -hmm. And you can throw it up and do all kinds of things. Pass it around the body, roll across the chest, pick it up like this. Matter of fact, this is a nice little trick I've found that kids might at home ought to try. But just pick it up off the ground like that. How do you keep it up? Well, every time the Frisbee comes around, I'm kind of lifting it with my finger. Uh -huh. So it starts to fall, and it comes around, and I lift it up. So I keep compensating for yeah, it. Let me try. All right, it takes a little bit of work. Exactly now, if you're throwing it, was it in the wrist, is it in the arm? Well, there are a lot of different grips, but I think the simplest one to learn is place it in your hand like this and you curl your fingers under and put your thumb on top mm -hmm. and then since it has to have spin to stay stable you curl it back against your forearm like this right. and when you throw it you snap it so you put it in your hand curl your fingers under grab it on okay. top curl it back against your wrist reach back and then snap it like that that's exactly right that's one of the grips mm -hmm. Hey, what happened? Somebody forget to pay the electric bill? We're trying to see if this lamp works. You'll attract bugs. The only thing bugging us, Mark, is you. I mean, suppose Rufus knocks out the power lines. Can you glow in the dark? Oh! Oh, oh. oh Trini! <laughs> this is Force Field. Hurricane Rufus appears to be heading this way. I've just talked to the pilot who flew into the eye of this hurricane, and he reports winds gusting up to 150 miles an hour. Of course, it's calm in the hurricane's eye, but it was pretty bumpy getting there. Great. So what makes it so rough? All that hot air rising and swirling around like a big whirlpool. It's scary. Hey, you know what the Australians call hurricanes? Willy willies. I bet you I know why. It's because you get the willies just thinking about them. Look, you guys, the hot air rising from this lamp isn't scary, is it? And when it rises gently from the ground, you can fly in it. Look. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Look at that. Because it's smaller, you have more, pa more control over... Near the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, I met Sabrina Jackentel, who's an expert glider pilot. Those are planes that soar without engines. That cloud over there, as you can see, is an uh, indicator that there is lift. It's a cumulus cloud. Yeah. And we would do some thermaling under that, just where it's building up like a cauliflower. Sabrina said that means hot air is rising from the ground. When we fly into it, it'll lift the glider. Yep. Mm. Use a little bit of right rudder. 
push down on it. Push down. Sabrina told me the other controls work the same way, to direct the flow of air over the wings and tail. This causes the air to push the glider into various positions. Because the glider has no engine, it has to be towed into the air until we find the rising air current. The thunderstorm cooled the air and we lost the thermals, so we had to land. to death up there. <laughs> you better believe I was. But I did it. That's true. <laughs> so are you ready to fly into the eye of Hurricane Rufus now? <laughs> yeah, right. Can you imagine what hurricane force winds would do to a glider? Look. <laughs> Some thrill. Hey, be better than a roller coaster. Yeah. Well, you'd never get me up in one of those gliders for a million dollars. Acrophobia? What? Fear of heights. No. I'm scared of falling. You know, I never even liked that game where you fall backwards and somebody catches you. Ah, oh, come on, try it with us. Oh, no. Come on, just uh, Trini, just come once. on. Suppose you drop me. Come on, just relax and let the force of gravity pull you down. That's what I'm afraid of. Come on, it's Don't great. Don't worry about it's it. It's really Let's fun. Go. go for it. Do it. <laughs> come on. Are you back there? Yeah, we're here. Don't you worry. Sure? Yeah. Yeah. You sure? You better catch me. We are. Come on. All right. Ready? Okay. Okay, ready? Go. Here I come. Here. <laughs> 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 We did. No, I'm never going to do that again. Hey, can you imagine making your living from falling off of things? That's crazy. Who'd want to do that? Stunt people do it all the time. This is Reed Rondell. He's learning to be a movie stuntman from one of the best in the business. His dad, Ronnie Rondell. Now, why do you have uh, two different bags in there? That's our safety factor in this bag. If something should fail, the big fan, and this start to get soft while Reed was on his way down, this is supposed to give us enough of an edge that he could still walk away from this unhurt, right. even though the bag became too soft. Do you know uh, how high it is up to the top of the roof? I believe it's 40, and it's probably about 35 to the bag. Are you going to uh, give it a try when you get up there? I don't know. I'll see what it looks like from up there. Well, let's go do it. Okay, let's go. The airbag helps cushion the fall, but the important thing, according to Reed, is landing okay, just I right. Walk, I got to get the tuck under so that my shoulders will take the punishment on my back, and it'll, you know, I'll tighten up. But other than that, it should be all right with the pad. Right. Now, what happened? What would happen if you landed on your feet? It would probably, you'd probably break your legs, just because you're hitting the pad. It's still, it's still got a lot of stiffness to it enough to, you know, unless you collapse your legs at the right time, uh -huh. it'd be all right. Okay. It's a lot further up from up here, let me tell you. Well, want me to go first, then you can see if you want to go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Let me shake it out first. Doc, ready? Okay. Okay, go, David. Go ahead. 
get me to be a stunt person in a million years. Yeah. They're very special people. Close, like a, a, like a family. Yeah, but they're constantly risking their lives. Yeah, and they know that their life depends on controlling those forces that could kill them. Man, that is really something to think about, you know? Whenever there's trouble, whenever there's trouble, we're the blessing game. If you've got the crime, we've got the time. Beethoven needs is a ten-year-old critic. Break one five for a radio check. I thought that said that as a mackerel. Break one five. Anyone got your ears on? Why can't you see be nuts speak plain English? Go ahead, radio check. You're loud and clear. You fixed it. Mr. Bloodhound had the squelch knob turned all the way up. Hey, thanks a lot. This is Private Eye wishing good numbers on you. Bloodhound Detective Agency. Whenever there's trouble with there on the double, Mr. Bloodhound isn't here. Yes. Got it, Mrs. Tolliver. Be right there. Do you know the Tolliver house? Find me Carl and tell him to meet me there. Break one two, break one two. This is Private Island with the space satellite. Space satellite out there? Imagine. Some stranger coming into my house without a proper invitation in the middle of the night. Exactly how much was stolen, Mrs. Tolliver? My life savings. Every dollar. You didn't put it in a bank? Don't trust banks. Have a watchdog. Dinner time, Eve Cliff. Come on, boy. Hurry up. That's a watchdog? Has a bark loud enough to wake snakes. Can't he wake you up? I never sleep with my hearing aid. Can't hear a sound without it. Follow me. You go on. This is where I kept the money hidden. You really shouldn't be climbing ladders, Mrs. Tolliver. Oh, fiddle faddle. I'm part mountain goat. Not a moth hole in it after 51 years. I can't imagine how anyone sneaked in and out. Doors bolted from the inside, windows too. Impossible. I kept this house locked up as tight as the bark on a tree. Here's someone's weight card. Haven't been on a penny scale in years. Never saw that before in my life. The burglar may have dropped it. Someone heavy. The weight is printed right here. 264 pounds. Mercy. I got it. The burglar got in and out through the chimney. A 264-pound man. How do we know it's a man? You're right, we don't. Cuff, put on your ears and see if there are any sea beers out there who knows where there's a weight scale that gives out little yellow cards. Let me see your suspects. Breaker 17, Breaker 17. This is the private eye looking for some info. 
That's her gardener. He's painting Mrs. Tolliver's fence. That's her nephew, Monty. His twin brother was sick in bed when I took the pictures. Mrs. Wilma, her cleaning woman. Now she looks like she might weigh 264 pounds, doesn't she? Did you read that, Private Eye? Benton Place, Street Carnival. Hey, that's the floor. Thanks for the comeback, Canary Mary. Hey, there's a street carnival over on Benton Place. And there's a scale that prints your weight on little yellow cards. If I guess wrong, give or take three pounds, you win a valuable prize. Bloodhound Detective Agency, do you remember guessing the weight of a woman, 264 pounds? 264 pounds? Not a chance. No woman that heavy gets weighed in public. A man, then. Can you give us a description? No, uh, I'd remember a gent that day. Tell you what I'm going to do. Step on the scales together and let me guess. Win two prizes for the price of one if I'm wrong. How about it, Vicky? Okay. The most of you. 230 pounds. Get on the scale. Clue in the attic? On the scale? Tomorrow, watch Vicky solve the baffling case of the 264 pound burglar. Hey, you know it takes force to change motion. Hey, get yep. up. It takes force to change motion. Mm -hmm. Girls. <laughs> This is Force Field, bringing you an up... Uh, tomorrow, Force, tomorrow. Oh, yeah? yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow Mark. Whoa! <laughs> 321 Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.